Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our June A to J Author New User Webinar. This is Jessica Frank, A to J Author's Project Manager. Each month, I like to include some tips and tricks that relate to issues that have come up with authors over the past month. This month is a reminder that about two great resources that we have created for you. The first is the A to J Analytics tool. It allows you to pull your own reports um, without requiring us on the A to J team to do anything for you. So you can pull your own reports about your interviews um, by going to the A to J analytics tab within your interview, requesting the report. It takes about uh, two to three days for that report to be set up. And then anytime you go back to that tab, you can update um, the parameters that you want for that report and pull customized reports for that interview. And I also want to remind you all about our sample exercises. There are 12 exercises that range in complexity from and, and time commitment that you can learn to use new skills in A to J author or to practice skills that you already know. Some of them are very basic and um, take about 30 minutes and just do one specific feature in A to J author, like how to do pop-ups, how to do macros, how to do functions. Some of them are longer. Um, there is an all-inclusive one that teaches you how to automate with an A to J and a hot docs, how to automate with an A to J and an A to J dat template. Um, and then some of them, those are all in a uh, pretend universe, have just a very basic form that isn't necessarily a court form. And there are a couple sample exercises that are tied to real life court forms that have been slightly modified that can give you a more realistic experience. You can find all of those sample exercises at this URL, or you can go to the learn tab on our website and follow the links for the, the sample exercises. So today's topic is about the last 10% of completing your document assembly form. So you have done the hard work of coming up with a script, making sure you have the correct forms and automating. So what do you do for that last 10%? So this is about selecting the correct exiting options for your end users, testing your interviews and your templates, and then publishing them so that end users can actually use them. Okay, so let's talk then about exiting options. So let's talk first about the first five options. Um, this screenshot is the destination page for the buttons tab, and it's showing you the five options to get your end user out of your interview. And we'll talk about each one individually over the next several screens, but I wanted to show them all at once. So this is the uh, when you're in the question design editor and you have scrolled down to the button section and you select pick destination page, up pops this modal and it gives you the option to pick from any of the existing pages that you have. If you scroll to the bottom, there's the special branching section and it ha the special branching section has options that are uh, unique to just A to J author um, that we created and have in place for you that are not author created. If you are up higher in the pages section, those are all author created destinations. So pages that you've made that you can send users onto. This special branching section is how to move the end user out of the interview. And it has success process form, exit user does not qualify, exit save incomplete form, assemble generate PDF document, and assemble generate PDF and process form. So let's first talk about success process form. This is the one that you're most likely familiar with if you have been an A to J author for a while. It's used when you have a hot docs template or a standalone A to J guided interview. So by standalone, I mean there's no template. So for example, an online intake form that goes into your case management system. This sends the user's answer file to whatever server is set up in the A to J viewer via a post request. So uh, the, the technical back end of it is A to J. When, when the user presses that button, it triggers a post request, which sends the user's answer file to whatever server is configured to accept it in the viewer. Um, for your end user, it means they click the button and their answer file is moved on. They get their document. They Their information is input into the case management system or it's saved on the um, host server's so this should only be this, there should only be one of these buttons with this destination per interview. For the successful end user who has completed the interview, this should be the last button they click because this is going to close the A to J viewer in their browser and send them on to whatever the next server step is. All right, so, so to review, success process form 
is used as a destination when hot docs templates are involved or when there is no template at all and you want to send the user's data somewhere else. You want to leave A to, A to J author completely and send it on to the next step, be it a hot docs template like hosted with LHI or your case management system if you're self-hosting, whatever it is, you want to move out of A to J author. That's what you use success process form for. The next option is exit user does not qualify. This is used when you want to redirect an end user to another website or another resource when they don't need or when they don't meet some parameter or qualification for using the interview. So for example, they aren't old enough or they make too much money or they're in the wrong county. Whatever it is that's going to kick them out of the interview, this is how you actually do that. And you can branch your end user to a set URL that you as the author designate and A to J, the A to J viewer will close and redirect them to that website if you've entered a URL. If you, you, if you leave the URL field blank, then it's just going to pop up a screen that tells them, unfortunately, you did not qualify to use this A to J guided interview. Please close your browser window or tab to exit the interview. So it's up to you if you want that to display or if you want um, them to be automatically redirected to a different URL. In any case, on that last page where you're going to have this button set as a destination, you should explain to the end user that they're being exited and for what reason so that they aren't just redirected or this doesn't pop up and they have no idea why they don't uh, qualify. There should be some sort of explanation associated with this button um, that you provide as the end user. The third option is exit save incomplete form. This is used when you want your end user to be able to leave the interview partly completed and come back later to finish it. This requires you as the author to enable this functionality in a couple of places. It also requires that the server you're hosting your interview on have the capability to allow an end user to create an account, save their answer file, and reload it in the A to J viewer. Currently, A to J.org and Law Help Interactive both have this functionality. If you're interested in self-hosting, we have instructions on how to set this up as well. To enable this functionality, you create a standalone question. By that, I mean one that isn't connected via branching to any other question. And you have that page say something like, you've clicked the exit button. If you want to exit, you'll be redirected to a screen where you can create an account or, lo or log into an existing one to save your answers. You can then come back later to complete this interview. Do you really want to exit? Then you should have two buttons, one that says something like exit or yes with the destination here of exit, save, incomplete form, and another button that's labeled no or resume interview or go back, something like that. That one should have the destination of resume interview. That's the safety hatch for the user who accidentally hits the exit button or who hits it because they want to see where it goes, but they didn't actually want to exit the interview. You want to have that safety net there um, to allow an end user who didn't actually want to exit to go back into the interview right at that point. And then once you've enabled the standalone question, you as the author have one final step to make this work, the save and exit work. You have to go to the steps tab shown here at the bottom and enable and add the standalone question as the exiting point. So it's over here in the far right corner. You click set exit point. You choose whatever that standalone question's name was as the exit point. And what that does is tell A to J author to add the exit button at the top of the navigation bar. So I have a little uh, cut out of it here in the middle of the screen. If there is some question li listed here as exit point, this button will display to the end user. When they click that exit button, it then also gives them the option to resume from that top navigation bar, but that's just as a backup in case you don't have that, the two buttons of really exit or go back. And then when the user comes back and reloads their answer file, they're going to be taken back to the point in which the, it, they left the interview. So that's a new feature with A to J Author's Advanced Navigation Panel that we added in December of 2021, which brings them back to the point in which they left the interview. Um, and they also have the option to open up this navigation panel and see the history that they've been through to go back to any of those pages and to see moving forward what steps are available to them next or if they've missed any steps in the process. That's what the uh, arrow is pointing to, a little warning that indicates they haven't answered that question. This advanced navigation panel then shows them everywhere they've been, 
where they need to go and gives them the history of their experience with the interview when they have uh, lo reload a saved answer file. The fourth option is, for exiting is assemble a uh, generate PDF document. This is only intended to be used with the A to J document assembly tool, the A to J DAT templates. It's not for Hotdocs templates. What this does is generate a PDF for the end user, but leave the A to J viewer screen open. The user then has to manually close their browser. It also doesn't send the end user's answer onto a server. So this should be used when you as the author only want the user to get their document and nothing else. There's no saving of an answer file. There's no sending their information on. It's a one and done. They do the, inter they do the interview, they take their document and they leave. Um, generally, this is used for short interviews where the interaction will be that one and done. It's also used in self-hosting instances when the server that you're hosting on doesn't have the ability to store answer files configured. This currently can be used on a to j.org, on LHI, or self-hosting purposes. The fifth and final exiting option to discuss is assemble, generate PDF, and process form. This again is only to be used with a to j dat templates and not hot docs templates. Similar to success process form though, this generates a document and sends the user's answer file onto the server to be saved. Again, it should be the final button in an interview for the end user and it, it lets the end user download their PDF and save their answer file to, an, to the server or to move it on into the next process. So for e-filing into a case management system, whatever it is, they get their document and send on their answer file to the next step of the process. So now that we've talked about how to exit your end user, are there any questions about that before I move on to testing? Okay, so there's a question about, will the resume feature work if there's a new version uh, since the interviews were saved of the interview at the same URL at a to j.org? So the resume function, yes, the resume function works in any of the a to j viewers. So the fact that the viewer version changes does not change the fact that the user's answer file that they have previously saved works in that interview. The only break there is between interviews that were run and answer files that were created before the advanced navigation feature was added and after the advanced navigation feature was added. So for a to j.org, that was December of 2021. For LHI hosted interviews, um, I believe they released in May um, the the version of the A to J viewer that contains advanced navigation. So any answer files that were created before the advanced navigation feature was was added to the A to J viewer do not have that history. The the um, mechanism for storing that history and the variable that saves it in the answer file were not in old instances of the viewer. So if an end user loads an answer file that was created in a pre advanced end user viewer, it was created in an old viewer, loads it into the new advanced navigation feature. That option of seeing their path and moving forward and skipping around that exists in all interviews is still there, but the history of where they were and what page they left the interview on is not saved. So they'll be taken back to the beginning of the interview, like the old experience in A to J. If any answer files that were created in a viewer that did contain advanced navigation, um, that their path is saved, and the, where they left the interview from, all of that information is saved, and those answer files can be uh, used as expected in any instance of the viewer moving forward. They can also be used, they're backwards compatible to work with old viewers as well. So say you make a, an answer file in um, the latest version of A to J viewer, which is running on a to j.org, and you take it to an LHI hosted interview or a self-hosted interview, all of the answer files are backwards compatible as well. And then what if new pages and or variables have been added to the interview since creation or with a change? I would have to test what that is if there was a break. They would be taken to the point of where they left the interview, but if you had added information or pages to the interview as the author that, that would have been earlier in their interaction, I believe it would show up as a warning that it's unanswered. Um, it also might run through the logic, um, the A to J viewer might run through the logic and see where the breaking points are. So if it was a required question that the end user would have hit at an earlier instance, but it didn't exist at the point in which they ran the interview, A to J might stop them and bring them back to that uh, page to rerun it. 
I'd have to test that though, um, Luigi. So I, I can do that in the next couple of days and check that out. Yeah, that's that's um, deep in the weeds for, for those of you who aren't uh, aren't updating your interviews regularly or um, as, as quickly are expecting people to go back and run them again in between changes. But I will double check that um, what happens when you load an answer file that was created in a previous version of the interview and something has changed with the interview. Um, does it force the end user to go back? So let's talk about testing, that this sort of final step that you need to do to make your interview complete. This is often neglected, but it is a vital part of the interview development process, testing. So testing should happen throughout the authoring process. The two sort of go hand in hand. You create a series of questions or logic statements, then you go to preview mode and you test them out. You make sure that A to J author is doing what you expect it to do. If not, you go back, you review your logic, you review your branching, you make sure that the questions look as you expect them to look, so there's no weird spacing, um, or there's not too much information asked for in a single question. Once you finesse that, when you finish the authoring process, you should still then spend a good amount of time testing the diff different iterations or paths of your interview. So test saying no to one of the, the forking questions, then go back and answer yes to that. Does it branch as you expect? Does it ask all the questions that need to be asked? And then you can create a series of answer files to then test against your template. So in preview mode, you open up the debug panel um, and you, once you've completed the interview, you've gotten to that exiting button and then you go into the top left corner and you save your answer file. When you click the save button, it's gonna download your answer file to test against the template. I like when I'm creating interviews and testing them to have a couple answer files before I actually go into test assembling against my templates. I have a few standard ones for basic testing too. So ones that I save on my desktop that I know have a uh, client first name, middle name, last name, um, maybe a birth date or an address. I have very basic ones that I keep saved on my desktop for quick tests just to make sure it's working, it's assembling, it's running what like a quick test. And then when I have an actual interview that I'm testing, I run through and go through the different paths. I say yes to have children, I say no to children, I say yes to spouse, no to spouse. Whatever, in, if you picture the, um, the map or the larger tree of the interview, go down the major branches and make sure that you're getting all the way to the end and then save those answer files. Because you, as um, end users, as, as authors, know when you're creating the interview, you secretly know the happy path, the path that works because you created it, you know to click yes here and no here. But your end user might click a path that you wouldn't expect. They might say, I have seven children and you only anticipated them to say five. They might have um, three ex spouses and you only expected them to have one. You need to just take the different iterations and really test the boundaries of your interview to make sure that it isn't going to give a dead end, you know, dusting all the corners, making sure to go down all the paths, whatever it is, get those answer files. Once you have the saved answer files, you can test assemble them against your template. In A to J, if you're using an A to J dat, dat template, you do that on the templates tab. If you're using a hot docs template, you test that against, you, you test assemble within the hot docs developer suite. You want to make sure that the answers line up where they're supposed to and that all the blanks you expect to be filled in are filled in with the information that you expect to be there. So this can take a couple of rounds of back and forth um, and making changes and retest assembling, rerunning through the interview. However, testing is hugely important um, because you want to make sure that you don't leave your end user stuck somewhere, that then in, a, you know, in six months of this being live, you get a bunch of complaints that your end users can't get through the interview and it really frustrates them. And it saves you hassle in the long run of not having to go back and make changes. Um, just do thorough testing while you're in it and it saves you time on the back end um, once you've completed the interview to not have to sort of get back in that mindset and make changes later. So now that you've dotted all the I's and crossed all the T's and you're ready to publish your interview and you, you wanna share it with the world, what are your options? So there are a couple of options for hosting your interview. You can host any interview designed for self-represented litigants on A to J author's very own A to J.org. We host those interviews for free currently with generous support from our Cali member law schools. They provide, um, they pay their Cali membership fees for us and then uh, we provide that hosting for self-represented litigants for free currently. You can also host your interviews on Law Help Interactive, that's LHI, 
If you have a developer account there, they provide hosting for LSC funded organizations and courts that have accounts with them and other organizations who have uh, developer accounts. If you need information about how to get a developer account on Law Help Interactive, um, reach out to me and I can connect you with Claudia Johnson, their project manager over there. And then there's always the option to self-host if you want more control over your interview and any of your user's saved answer files. To publish on a to j.org, you go to the Publish tab and you select the Publish to a to j.org button. It'll publish your interview and give you a link to share with your end users. All of our authors who have authoring accounts um, have access to publishing on a to j.org. There's no separate account that you need to log in. You can create an interview, you can publish it. Um, once you publish it, you have the option to mark it live or demo mode. Demo mode puts a watermark on the interview to let your end users know that it isn't intended for final use. If you check the, if you click the demo button, like you want to change it to live, if you mark it live, then we're going to just ask you for some basic demographic information about what state is it intended to be used in and what website you'll be linking it to it from. Publishing from L publishing to LHI also happens under that Publish tab in your interview. You can publish to their live site, their production site, or their development site called Rebuild QA. Depends on if you're in testing mode or if you're ready to publish it to production, which of their servers you use. But once you do that, you'll be prompted to log into their system with your LHI credentials um, and ask for demographic information as well. We don't control anything with the LHI demographics. Um, or credentials. So once you get to this screen and you click Save to LHI, we have sent the information up to them. So any issues that you have after that point are something that have to be dealt with on the LHI team. So if your credentials don't work, if the interview is not publishing as expected, um, you could reach out to me and I'll help you navigate with them. But they control everything then that has this Law Help Interactive uh, banner at the top. So all of the um, creating new or updating existing interviews and all the demographic information that it asks for, that's all um, LHI required and based on your developer account and your agreement with them. And if you want to self-host, you can find the files you need and the instructions in our GitHub repositories. So A to J Author is open source. So all the files and all the information you need to set it up on your own system is available and updated as needed. Um, we maintain the repositories, but they are open. So if you do have issues um, or problems with A to J Author, you can always put in an issue um, that our team sees. I get emails, our developers get emails whenever issues are added to the queue. It also pops up in our Slack channel, so everybody gets to see if there are issues with A to J Author. We have the A to J Viewer and the A to J DAT, which I'm showing you here. If you want to self-host the viewer, the interviews, or the DAT, the templates, um, there's also an A to J DEPS, which are the dependencies, and we allow you to self-host author as well. Um, that was open sourced uh, a year and a half ago. So all those are available. If you have questions about self-hosting or have issues setting them up, we have our A to J backend developer, Tobias Interejo, who is available for questions and help there. Now, once you have figured out where you're putting it, you put it up on that server, you're, you've published it, it's live. You always wanna make sure to test your interview again, particularly with clients, potential users, subject matter experts, when it's live on the server. Because as much as we try to make sure that there are no differences between the version that is on a to j author.org and the version that is hosted um, either on LHI or a to j.org or self-hosted, there can be slight variations on what version of the viewer is live. We do on a to j.org and a to j author.org have the same versions of the a to j viewer and the a to j dat running, but there is a difference um, many times between the version that is on author and the version that is on LHI or self-hosted. There's a lag, it takes time for them to, once we, we um, release the new versions, for them to get them tested and put up. So always, always test again to make sure it is running as expected and hit all of those possible branches as well. But just know that our next webinar is July 7th at 11 a.m. Central here on GoToMeeting. Also, if you have uh, ideas or suggestions for uh, future um, sessions, um, don't hesitate to uh, call us out. What would you like, Jessica, to uh, talk about at these uh, new user webinars? Thanks, John. 
And also a note, um, Cali is having our Cali conference next week. So if you are interested in legal technology and legal education, um, I'll be doing a session on um, using A to J author with law students and how it teaches them empathy. We have a bunch of other interesting sections. If you're interested in that, you can go to uh, cali.org and follow the link for our conference to sign up as well. It's next Thursday and Friday. Okay. Well, I'm not seeing any questions. I'm not seeing any hands. So thank you all for attending. Um, and I will see you all uh, back here in July. Happy June.